So, yeah, good morning, everyone. Today, I'm going to talk about how you guys culture sell with biomaterial. So, maybe some of them you are already familiar with these topics because you are you have some experience to culture the cell on the biomaterial or with the biomaterial, but yeah, for um, increasing your memory or to summarizing or for your fresh yeah, idea, yeah, I I prepared these topics. So yeah, as you cannot remember, yeah, last week we tried to understand the biocompatibility classification based on ISO and the cytocompatibility and animal study. So we are classified into three groups. Do you remember? So, and then this week we are culturing how to culture cell with the biomaterial, direct, indirect, or scaffold, or gel, 2D and 3D. So, to increase your knowledge, so what is your abbreviation of ISO? Songmin. What is your abbreviation of ISO? Yeah, most of people remember like that, but there is no abbreviation. ISO is meaning same. Yeah, ISO. Okay? Same. Yeah. S standard, something like. And then Junu, did you remember group one? What is the meaning of the group one? Junu, are you thinking now? Okay, how about Wendy? Did you remember the meaning of group one? Okay. <laughs> yeah, group group one is yeah, in vitro study, right? Simple in vitro study. Yeah, you can direct or indirect culture cell with the biomaterial. Okay, and then what is the meaning of group two? Andrew, group two. Yeah, that is group one, cell with the material. And the group two is simply in vivo study. Okay? In vivo biocompatibility study. Actually, group three is in vivo but biocompatibility plus efficacy. Okay? So those group one to three is involved as biocompatibility test. So and then uh, all of them are called preclinical study. Before clinical study, you have to test your material using these three groups test. And then, the relationship among the groups. If you fail group one, you cannot make it in the market. No, you can make it market. After passing group two test. Sometimes your material can fail in vitro study, but, you don't, but succeed by group two study. And then group three. So as a preclinical test, the most easiest way to pass group one to three consequently, but sometimes if you fail group one test, which, which means in vitro cytotoxicity, but you can do in vivo directly, and then when there's no no toxicity in the tissue, you can use it for further. Okay? And then what is the clinical trials? Clinical trials, you have to be approved by the FDA using preclinical test result. So if you don't have preclinical test result, you cannot get the approval. So there's what at least one, you, ha you have to issue some document. And then clinical trial, you are categorized page one to three. Jiyoung, did you remember page one to three? Mm, yeah, kind of. So phase one, for normal people, you dose them to know the side effect and then to know the 
to determine the saved amount of your drug or your material. Okay? This is phase one to normal patient and normal people. And then now phase two, you can try with a ill uh, patient. So you can compare patient versus normal people using your drug or material. Okay? In small number or more or less 200 people. And then phase three, you can increase more than 1,000 or 2,000. This is a normal pathway for approving your material or drug from this consequence. So please try to remember this whole procedure. So the thing you have done in iTrain is most of, most of the part is involved in group one to three, okay? So if you do in vitro study, oh, this is a group one study. If you do in vivo, group two study. But most of the time we can do group three study to check the efficacy. So like such as carbaria defect, skin wound healing, ischemia model, all of the things are involved in group three. Okay, and to this today we are going to talk about how to culture cell with biomaterial. So there are many types of biomaterial. So I categorize into four groups. So disc scaffold, membrane fiber, nanoparticles, and hydrogel. So most of them are categorized like this. So based on this scaffold, uh, they are not floating, which means even though you put the media, they are not floating, they maintain. So this is the most easiest way to investigate the biocompatibility or efficacy. In case of membrane fiber, most of the time they are floating when you immerse in media. But that's why you need some special tips. In case of nanoparticle, uh, you see the cell first, and then you can treat the nanoparticle as a drug. Okay, this is another way. And then in case of hydrogel, yeah, more difficult to handle. So this maybe if you if we cut up length, the difficulty from this four group. Maybe the most easiest way is this scaffold or nanoparticle. I think nanoparticle is the most easiest way. And then second, this can scaffold. And then membrane fiber, last hydrogel. Yeah. So you have to remember this. But let's see one by one. So first, diet culture, static condition. In case hard enough to move, and not floating in media. So normally, let's say if you have hard material like metal, ceramic, or any kind of scaffold in 24L or same size 4L, you have this hard material on the bottom, right? And then when you see the cell and then add the media, this hard material cannot floating up. So you can just gently see the cell on the top of the hard material. Okay, but some people are doing like that. Just you add a cell wholly in this well. In that case, some cell can attach this bottom or some cell can attach this hard material surface. So you can uh, investigate how your material attract the cell sometimes. But most of the times, it's not easy to see the difference because culture plate is very good plate for adherent the cell. So that is why we need hard material and then only on the surface of hard material you see the cell. And then after four hours later you can add more media to fill this well. Okay. So normally the size of the hard material diameter is 10 to 12 millimeter to fit this four well. Actually, let's say uh, this four wheel diameter is around 15, and then 10, 12 millimeters is okay because you need some gap space to move the material. But if you two feet to this four wheel diameter, you cannot move easily to the other wheel. So that is why I recommend at least two or three millimeter, there is a gap. 
between this hard material and the well. Yeah. This is not very accurate diameter. So if you consider your well size, and then you can determine what is, what is the appropriate diameter of your material. Let's say you are using six well, and then you want you want to do some western blood, and then six well diameter is around 20 or 25, and then when you can make 23 diameter or 22 diameter of certain material, it's okay. You can put the material and then you can see the cell, and then at a glance you can gather many cells or protein. So depending on the your interest of the well size, you can determine the diameter of the hard material. And then height is around 10, 1 to 5 millimeter. When, when the height is too thin, it's not easy to move, to grip the, by the post forcep. If you're too thick, it's a waste of the material. So 1 to, one to 2, 1 to 3 millimeter height, height is appropriate. And then basic procedure like this. Uh, so actually, if you use the hard material and then you want to see the cell on, on the surface of the hard material, always do this in incubator. Sometimes in culture room, you can look at please don't open or close, which means that some of your colleagues put uh, doing this procedure. Prepare for well and then put your hard material on the bottom and then add 100 micro microliter of 5,000 cell suspension in incubator, okay? And then you can see some uh, cell, cell suspension here. After four hours, checking no leakage. Sometimes this round shape they can spread out of the your material, which means there is some chance to lose the cell. So you cannot directly compare the cell adhesion. So that's why. After checking the no leakage up until four hour, why four hour? Four hours is enough enough to attest the cell normally. So if you want to say initial attestment, the most of the time point is four hour or less than four hour. So and then you have to during the, this four hour check status, don't open and close the door as much as possible. And then you can move this four well to the clean bench. And washing with DPBS or HBS SS in the med media adding around 600 and 1000 microliter and then culture until determined time another 20, 20 hour or two days three days to determine the proliferation or other things like the toxicity so in case of metal like the titanium disc or ceramic disc or some polymer, but they are hard enough to move, or hard enough not floating in media, like germa or other things. Okay, and then in case of a scaffold, also if you if you can make scaffold to fit this spool well, you can make it. You can the same way. Okay. Anyhow, I want to highlight you can culture the cell only on the surface. This is the most. Uh, welcome way to investigate your material but sometimes you can fill this cell suspension in the well, whole well and then you can differentiate cells are differentially attached on your material and then cover on the on the culture plate and then for example if you can make some film like biopolymer and then you can add your material on the top like this shape. Let's say this is biopolymer. You have your material. And then you can and when you can make this two surface area same, and then you can add your cell, and then you can know which kind of surface is more appropriate, more attractive to allow cell adherent. You can directly compare the adherent affinity. Okay? Mm. So you can think as much as possible. When you can, have, when you have some question, you can tell me anytime. So yeah, this is the way. So let's see. You put your four wire or twenty four wire in incubator, and then there's a disc, okay? And you in your pipette, you already gather your cell suspension from clean bench. 
and then move to the incubator and then gently add the cell like this. This is okay. But if you do like this, maybe after four hours, they can go away, which means you can then uh, control the cell number on the same surface. Okay? That is why uh, as much as as much as large area, but sometimes not very large area. Okay? So like this, you can culture the cell. And then second one, let's imagine the 3D scaffold. Okay? So you have to remember cells cannot defect, I'm uh, sorry, that defect, defeat, cannot defeat air bubble at all. So when you have some scaffold, you always consider about the bubble. Okay? So let, let's imagine you are the cell on the top, but on the scaffold, there are a lot of bubble, air bubble, and then there is no way to go through this scaffold. Okay? Also, in case of microsphere, it's also, also like that. So you have, you should remove the air bubble. So this is Jiang's protocol. So syringe pumping with media. Yeah, maybe Jiang attached some video for us. So when you imagine you have some syringe, in this syringe, you put the media and then scaffold together, and then you can induce negative pressure. And then somehow the air bubble is removed, and then the scaffold can be immersed in the media. Okay? Or in that way, you can DW pipetting, or you can do any other way like vacuum incubator, something like. But Ji Young told me syringe pump with media in negative pressure is the most optimal way to remove the bubble. Okay. So simply put in 1.5 ml tube, and then after removing the media, put your scaffold in 0.5 ml tube and the culture on top for 4 hours and then they first the media they cannot set, they cannot go down but somehow over time they can penetrate on the bottom and then start to infiltrate and then you will know how your cell can penetrate the scaffold so once you make the scaffold and then you have to determine whether your cell can penetrate well or not. If your cell cannot penetrate, there is no way to have successful result from the in vivo. We did a lot this scaffold in in vivo, but the, the most important parameter to determine your success is to your cell can penetrate well from the top to bottom. Okay. So in case of some 3D structure <coughs> fiber or this, this 3D printing scaffold. Other things is also you have to check this one. But if, if the, this uh, diameter is enough to penetrate the cell, it's okay. But somehow your pore size is around 10 or 20, little larger than your cell. In that case, you have considered this thing. But your size is around 100, 200, there is no way to be involved in the air bubble. So in the, in the, at the moment, I'm only talking about some static culture. Static means there is no media movement. But so, sometimes you can do like that. Always the body fluid flow. Okay? So to, to mimic the body fluid flow, you can use shaker in incubator. Okay? So more biomimetic, but somehow but less constant result can occur. So let's say if you treat uh, this culture dish, fibronectin or any other peptide, and then you want to check whether your cell can attach on the bottom in more biometric way, and then you can put the cell suspension, let's say 600 microliter of 550,000 cell per ml, and then you shake them, and then culture them determine time. And then static, maybe most of the cells are touching very easily, but in case of dynamic condition, maybe half cell can attach. And when you look at the adherent cell morphology, the morphology is not similar as the static culture condition. This is more biomimetic way. So if you hypothesize that your surface or your material has some 
good audacious ability and then to highlight that point you can do like that diet culture under shaker or some cell adhesion of cell adhesion test using micro micro fluidic devices okay so you are already familiar with the static culture condition but the more biometric way is the dynamic culture condition using shaker or micro micro fluidic devices or any other yeah, movement is welcomed yes in case of hard material just okay put the other material and then shake it and then the, when the hard material can attract the cell more easily you can see more cell on the top so exactly we have the certain incubator in 37 degree or 5 percent co2 you can use the incubator for checking the dynamic culture adherent and then let's uh, go, to, go through direct culture number two. When does mature material too soft to move, hard to uh, grip, and then floating media. In case of this fiber versus membrane, if you imagine this fiber membrane, they are easily floating off. First, initially, they are not floating, but over time, they can float. Okay? So we need this both side tap, medical, medical grade both side tap. So, and then uh, you can use this punch. We have punch from many diameter in cell culture room. So you can choose uh, some of them based on your size of the well. And then you also, this is some size of the culture plate. Their diameter is like this. So if you want a six well, and then the diameter is 35 millimeter, so maybe you can use all of this punch. So best thing is large, larger one. Let's say if you have a 16 millimeter 24 well, and the best thing is around this 12.6 or 14 to two millimeter. Okay, this is the best thing, best punch to make the specimen of the your fiber or membrane. And then after punch your membrane using this 12.6 uh, millimeter punch, and then you tape the both side paper. And then the other side, you can attach this cover clip, which can make more weight. And then your, your material cannot floating up. So totally, it can look like this. Let's say you have this 4 well or 48 well. The cover slip diameter is you choose 2 at 9 millimeter, and then you punch the nanofiber 8 millimeter, and then you can attach this nanofiber on the medical tape. Uh, sorry, nanofiber you can have you can get the membrane like this, membrane like this, and then directly you attach this medical tape on the bottom or top maybe bottom and then you punch it as a complex okay and before you punch it you maybe you have to detach one layer to attach this nanofiber or both sides 3d medical tape and then you can have another layer so you remove the layer and then this medical tape can attach on the cover sleeve but the thing is that cover sleeve diameter is more larger than this your complex and then this whole three complex cannot floating up even though you put the media. Okay. And then you can put this complex in four or forty-eight well. Yes. So thankfully Andrew took some video for us. So let's watch it. So Andrew makes some uh, PCF film on the Teflon mold. I go. Okay, very fast. Push. Punch. Attach. Okay, one more. Medical tape. Can you see? 
Mm. If you have any question, ask and you. <laughs> Detail. Yeah, it exports it now. So, number three, let's say nanoparticle. So, I continuously talk about this nanoparticle serial dilution for every, maybe most of your, you, you, most of you guys. So, I want to summarize and then highlight this very golden standard in iTrend to evaluate your nanoparticle at the beginning. Okay? Which means if you have any new nanoparticle or anything, any powder, please do like this. Okay? If you do not like this, in the seminar time, I will blame you. Okay? Let's say you have nanoparticle like this. And then you have to wait. Wait like this. At first, any nanoparticle is okay. Just make 6.4 mg per mil in DWR PBS. Any solution is okay, depending on your nanoparticle. So if you don't have anything in your mind, you DW. Okay? N number should be 8. Okay? 8 is golden standard. And then you have to imagine how much you need. The total volume of this 6.4 mg per mil for serial dilution cytotoxicity test. So I'm going to tell you in detail. So let's say this is 10x of uh, 640 microgram per mil. So we need, in case of dynamics well, 10 microliter we need for each well. So I will step by step explain you, but just remember 10 microliter for each well, and number 8, just multiply 2. Okay? And then you multiply again 20% because your pipetting is horrible. So if you make just double, you cannot make the double exact amount. Maybe you have many experience. <laughs> Always if you have to make 10 or 20% more. Your pipetting is always horrible. You should remember. And then you can get 192 microliter. So you have to prepare 200 microliter for Serial dilution test cytotoxicity test from uh, 640 microns per mil to zero. Okay? So, and then you can make, you can weigh 1.28 milligram and then put the 20 microliter DW. Yeah. You have to save your nanoparticle. But it's not easy to 1.28 milligram. Okay? So 1.3 or 2 milligram, something like. Uh, so most of the scenario is 2 milligram, and then calculate the volume to make this kind of amount. Okay. And then vortexing 10 second, sonication 10 second, and still the solution, stack solution, the the nanoparticle should be well suspended. If you cannot see, do it again. When you achieve this very homogeneous suspension. And then right after sonication on the vortex, when you can see some little particle on the bottom, you have to do it again and again until you have to, you cannot see that nanoparticle or some microparticle on the bottom right after sonication of the vortex. Okay? There are aggregated things. So this initial vortex and sonication can determine all of your experiment. Sometimes some people say, my nanoparticle can have toxicity around 160, but if you use cell nanoparticle, but some people said my nanoparticle starts toxicity from 40 micro per mil, what will be the difference between the two people? This is from this begin from the beginning. How you successfully make stack solution? Okay. And then, so as I told you, we are going to make 10x stack make stack solution. So why we choose 6.4 mg per mil to have the maximum concentration 640 micron per mil. Okay? Always keep in mind your maximum concentration like this and then multiply 10 times and then make the stack solution. As I told you this is a golden standard from the 10 years of experience. Please follow this. Okay? And then uh, treatment within 30 minutes. 
in case if your nanoparticle are degraded. If your nanoparticle not degraded, it's okay. Just put it in the fridge and then treat it any time. But if your nanoparticle is degraded, it's better to treat as much as possible. But sometimes, from saving your time, just put the degradation of a particle in the fridge and you can use it. But the up and down result is up to you. And then I recommend that you have to see the cell first, the day before you treat the particle. So after one day seeding, what will be the appropriate appearance, appropriate confluency of your cell? So confluency is uh, more or less 80%. If your cell's confluency over 80, maximally 100%, please blame your hand. Okay? You cannot get a good result. Yeah. Oh, you can remember more cell and then more resist to toxicity. So there's why uh, the appropriate confluency after this amount of cell sitting one day later around 80%. So depending on your cell type, from fibroblast low cell, their cell uh, cytoplasm area, you can choose between from 3,000 to 10,000 cell. So any this kind of conference is okay after one day of sitting. And then on day zero, you can treat your nanoparticle. Okay? So this is the procedure. Uh, you already prepared 10 stock for 640 micro per mil, around 200 microliter, mm. and then you can get 160 microliter in each tube. One each tube is okay. Okay, and then you already change the media, new media. 100 microliter is inside in the 96 well. This is from the protocol of 96 well. So you already change in new media, one day microliter is inside in the 96 well, each well. And then we are planning to add 10 microliter in this media. Okay? So after baking this 160 microliter of E tube around this uh, concentration, and then you move, ten, add 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10. Total 80 microliter was consumed. Okay? For 640 micro per mil. Okay? And then, what is the remaining amount you eat you? Amar, what is the remaining amount? Remaining volume of your eat you. Your original volume is 160, and then you add 10, 10, 10, 8 times, total 80. What will be the remaining amount? 80, right? Did you get it? Yeah, you should you should understand. 80 microliter you have it right, and then you can add more 80 microliter DW, and then mix them vortexing. Then what will be the concentration of that nanoparticle? Half. Okay, 320 microgram per mil, and then also you do next row, 10, 10, 10, 10. Total 80 microliter was consumed. And what will be the remaining of this this batch, 80 microliter? So you add another fresh DW, 80, mix them, and then you can get 160. And then next row, 10, 10, 10, 10, remaining 80, adding 80 more DW mixing things. And then you can do 40, 20, 10, to yeah, anything you can do. So that is why we need this number two. Because if you remember your high school or middle school, there's some, I forgot how to name it. But anyhow, half and half, half and half. If you sum all of the half things, maximum is the multiply two. Okay? So the best scenario is that anyhow, for 96 well, you, in case of you add 10x stock solution, and then 100 microliter of, the, of media, and then the, vol, the appropriate volume of nanoparticle is 10 microliter, and then you can make eight number, and then just multiply two. Okay, and then you can make 
your stock solution and then after that put in each tube and then do like this. This remaining amount of 40, what is it for? Just in case sometimes you forgot, oh, I have to add this one or not. You always forgot. There's a, just in case we have we need some extra. So this is direct adding your nanoparticle suspension in the media. But sometimes you can argue that uh, if you separated media and then adding the nanoparticle, they are not mixed well. Okay? In that case, you can pre prepare, not direct this well, another E tube for each load. So let's say you have prepared this one E tube, and then this E tube, you already add 80 microliter. Okay? And then you add total 80 microliter or nanoparticle in this media 800 microliter. And the total, and the vortexing, total volume is 880, right? And then you directly suction and then add 10, 100, 100, 100, 100. Okay? Then you can have a remain of 80 microliter. But surprisingly, you cannot see that volume. When you add 100, 100, there's nothing in your E2. Yeah, always, your pipetting is horrible. Okay? So if you prepare another e, e tube separately for each low of your concentration, and then you can homogeneously mix them together and then adding in the each one. So this is very golden standard in serial dilution toxicity test. So from now on, I strongly recommend you have to follow this one at the initial point. But sometimes after this one, you can determine which which range is appropriate for you, and then you can do from 180, 6, 40, 20, 10, something like. In that time, you can make your own protocol. But as an initial screening test, you have to follow this. Okay? Yeah, so, yeah, this final consideration of this one. So, up to uh, more or less concentration, continuously you can do. And then if you do this, there is no error of this uh, level. So if you separate make 640, 320, 160, because of your horrible pipetting, the concentration may be, sometimes you forgot, oh, this 600, 300, you always forgot. So that is why if you have one E2, and then dilute in that from the E tube, you there is no reason to forget, to forget. Okay, this is hydrogen. So let's say uh, this is uh, Song Min did well about this hydrogen things at the moment. So in case of hydrogen, most of hydrogen they are floating. Yeah, in case of polyacrylic gel. But, but in case of Germa, maybe they are not floating well. You can use it our first protocol. But when they are floating well, you are preparing cover slate on the bottom. And then you attach the hydrogel in here. But without this PDMS link, your cell, when you see the cell, they are go away. So that's why we need this PDMS link. And then after PDMS link, attachment on the cover slip and then you can add your hydrogel and then after that you can see the cell so there is why compared to other nanoparticle other nanoparticle was careful there are a lot of step to make it this hydrogel there is why this most toughest way to culture the cell and then you have to make this PTMS ring so you can make PTMS some PTMS Flake, uh, flake on 100 dish, then you can punch one time outer for diameter, 30 millimeter punch, and then you can get this disc. And then from the disc, you can punch again for inner 11 millimeter. Then you can have this kind of donor shape. You can determine the height of the PDMS link based on the volume of your PDMS volume. When you make how you how much of volume you pour 
on the laundry dish. And then you put this ring on the cover slip. Surprisingly, when the PDF ring is attached on the cover slip, the water cannot, cannot go out. Because the PDMS has a lot of oxygen, so this oxygen can attach well on this cover slip. So there's no way to hydrogen leakage from, from the, this PDMS ring, inner and then outer area. And then you put hydrogel and then see the cell. In another way, you can just pour the hydrogel on the bottom of your web plate. For some, some, but at that time, your hydrogel not flat, always like this. Okay? If you don't mind this shape, it's okay. But if you are mind, just do like this. Also, some hydrogel during the polymerization, they are shrink it. So always there's a gap outer surface. But in case of PDMS link, somehow PDMS link can uh, grip your hydrogel from maybe hydrogen bonding. So that's why there's not much of gap between hydrogel and PDMS link. And then the flat surface is relatively flat. And then most of the hydrogel, not most, in case of polyacamal gel, we need some protein for cell attachment. So we have to use golden sandal sulfur sampa for attachment and then we have to add fibronectin, collagen, and RGD peptide and laminin and other things on this hydrogel. So first the golden standard of hydrogel for culture in the cell is polyacrylamide poly gel. Okay. And then people are making another gel like Dialumexid, Germa, Meha, Material gel, any other things. So when you when you can understand how the polyacrylamide poly gel are made it for cell culture, you can understand other cell culture protocol easily. So first thing you have to remember, your hydrogel can have uh, cell adhesion moiety or not. Gelma, gelatin based, they have RGD sequence. Collagen gel. They have collagen and the RGD sequence they have. In case hyaluronic acid, maybe RGD sequence doesn't have, but hyaluronic acid, they have some CD44 for chondrocyte. So chondrocyte, they can easily attach. But if, when you can of other fibroblasts, maybe not much of a chance to attach. So try to remember and then figure out your hydrogen can have Ah, in case of, I'm not, what is that, the material? The, hmm? you, the material you make it, not Jerma, another one. Yeah. Pulsi. Pulsi, yeah. Pulma, Pulma. Yeah, yeah Pulsi, Pulsi, yeah. That Pluron, Pluron based one, Pluron also doesn't have any RGD binding site. So that's why we have to conjugate more some of these cell attach moiety. Okay? So this is means protocol. So this is for 4 well or, or 6 well, Songmin. 6 well, right? 6 well, right? In case of 6 well, we are making this, uh, this is cover seal, right? Cover seal, and then you are making inner diameter O-ring. Inner diameter is 18, maybe outer diameter is 22. So you have to punch this PDMS to punch it. And then acrylamide gel pour in this inner side. So step one is make the O-ring in appropriate diameter, inner 80, outer 22. Pour I gel inside of the O-ring around 700 microliter. And then cover with Lane OK treated glass for flat surface, this flat surface, and after ah, cover with in the bottom uh, top right, yeah, cover with very well, okay is to not binding your gel on this cover sleeve, yeah. So after pouring the gel, the cover sleeve should be covered on this gel with lay no okay to easily detach this cover sleeve and the gel, and that gelation. Take off the cover glass and 
wash it one time to removing this rain okay and then three strapos on on the top of your poly gel for chemical conjugation with coating protein and then wash it overnight and then the on attached strapos sampa they are removed actually there is one step is missing UV irradiation right UV irradiation and then strapos sampa they are conjugated and then and then free surface sample they are detached from this washing step and then coating protein are emerged on the top surface two to four hours and then you wash again for detaching the free pro protein right and then cell seeding on the top so you can make these three different kilopascal and then you can see that attached High kilopascal, more cell spreading, low kilopascal, they are just maintain their cell. Okay? So at the moment, uh, Sangmin is more, more expert and then Sangcher and uh, Hyona, Jonga, or Jonga, they yeah, learn from Sangmin. So maybe please yeah, help from those people yeah, after buying them some good ice cream. So this is very yeah, one of the golden standards to culture your cell. So in, so the most uh, so song mean what is the most important step for successful culture cell on the display of gel? Size, 18 millimeter. Oh, really? You mean when uh, when you when you have many cell, you can have this 18 millimeter. But if you have less cell number, we can decrease. Top surface yeah, are polymerized. So appropriate amount of the surface sample is just emerge the surface, right? Yes. As, as much as less amount. Yes. Yeah. Just simply emerge it. Actually, there are some. Uh, already determined concentration of surface sample, right? Surface sample is already determined the specific con concentration, yeah. like four micrograms per mil. They are provided like this, and then we can just use it, and then just simply immerse using as much as small amount. So, so in case of a uh, smallest well, so what is the size of the this cover slip in, by your hand? Let's say if you want to make some four well. Millimeter. So now you are doing when you are doing with Sangcher? 18. 18. 18. 12 millimeter of acrylamide gel. And they are fitting in 24 well? 12 well? 12, 12 well. Okay. Yeah, after that, yeah, I will update about the 12 well protocol by Sangcher. <laughs> I think Sanctuary are already make, make the protocol, right? Yeah. And then this is uh, another way. Yeah. So when you guys do not want to use Sampa Sampa, you can do like this. You can prepare these two cover slips, yeah, ECM coating one or clay silanization one. After ECM coating, 
on this. So how you put the ECM like 519? Just emerging? Some mean? Just just put your protein on the top of the this glass without any treatment? Ah, plasma treatment. So there are more physical adhesion on the, this glass. And then glass reanimation is for attaching the gel on this bottom glass. Okay, and then this below one is from this ECM coated one, right? And the upper one is glass reanimation, and you can pour your acrima gel. And then put these things. So the bottom one should be larger than the small one to easily detach from the yellow, the yellow one and then orange one and then you, you can shift and then detach this bottom ECM coated glass and then you can get this one can you get it? so yellow top 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 switch it so yellow is on the bottom this orange bottom, bottom, and switch on the top, and then they are removed. So on the top surface, the ECM will transfer your gel. And then the bottom is uh, glass. Try to understand. And then you can get this kind of very good, yeah, one, two days, very good cell adhesion. And then what is the uh, demerit of this pro pro this procedure, some mean, compared to the first protocol. Okay. So you have to remember the chemical or physical conjugation. So when your uh, cell, cell attachment moiety are chemically conjugated, maybe it's working well. But they are physically conjugated, also physically detached. So cells have very, very powerful force. <laughs> so they can easily detach the protein on the cell surface. So the in, a merit of this, this second procedure is that over time, the cell are floating up because cells are from the contraction force the protein coated one is detached easily right we observe many times from this longer culture but in case of chemical coating the ch chemically conjugated protein or peptide they cannot easily uh, detach even from the cell so it's very strong and then sustainable but when you can just we are using this one for in case of uh, traction force analysis. If you want to analyze how the cell makes some force, we can we have to use it. So what is the surface sample? You have to you have to try to remember surface sample. It's very golden standard to conjugate the peptide or protein in any kind of your particle or hydrogel or scaffold. So for example, it's heterobifunctional. Cross-linker that contains amine reactive, NHS, ester, and photoactivator, activatable nitrophenyl azide. So first, when exposed to UV light, this Nitrophenyl azide from nitrogen group can initiate addition reaction with double bond, insertion into CH and NH site, or subsequent link expansion to react with the neuro neutrophil primary amines. Just try to understand when the UV is lighted to this NHS, uh, sorry, this photoactivable nitrophenyl azide. They can they have some double bond, so they have some action reaction or link or expansion to react the primary amines. So if your material has some primary amine, primary amine then NH2, in any cases, 
and then you can conjugate this surface alpha by uv. In the meaning of surface alpha, they have hetero bifunctional. Hetero means two different. Bifunctional is functional group, two different sites. So one is for uv acti activable. The other one is NHS sister react with primary amino groups also from any protein. So actually, any your protein always have these amine groups because these amine groups is from the amino acid sequence. If you have any protein, you guys have amino groups. That is why in P3, 7, and 9 buffer, they form stable amine amide bond. Did you remember amide bond in NH, OS? NACOH, NACH, CO, NACO, NACOH, this amide bond. So the reaction result in the lead of the sulfur and hydroxyamide, which will be vigorously washed to the crystal toxicity. So let's say this is a bi hetero bifunctional uh, sulfur sample. This is photoactivable nitrophenylazide. Nitrophenylazide, okay, like this. And then amine reactive and hydroxysucinamide ester. This is a hydroxysucinamide ester. Okay? So basically, you have acrylamide gel, sulfur sampha, when they are immersed and the UV light, this one is react your polyacrylamide gel. Your polyacrylamide gel also have these amino groups, amine groups, and then they are attaching. And then they have free this amine reactive NHS, and then later, just you immerse them overnight, this protein and then NHS together, pH around 7 and 9, they are automatically conjugate from the stable amide bone. And then you can successfully see the cell. Okay? So when you look at this, this bottom chemical structure, is what is that? This is polyacrylamide gel. As you can see, polyacrylamide gel have NH2, primary amine, okay? And then this primary amine, when they meet the, the sulfur sulfur, okay? This is NHS, this is the photoactivable site, okay? And then when the UV light conjugated, this double bond is open, and then they can conjugate with this NHS2. And then this is gone, like this. And then only remaining NHS here, okay? And then after UV light, they are chemically attaching on the acrylamide gel and sulfur sample. And then you, after washing the free sulfur sample, and then you can emerge the your protein because your protein always have amine groups, PBS in pH 7.4, and then emerge them overnight, and then they are naturally conjugate. Okay, important thing is that in case of PBS, there is no amine in the PBS except this protein. So when they have some amine groups, this amine can attach this uh, sulfur sample, so they are losing some attachment efficacy. So this ring opening, and then chemically conjugated, and then this amide bond, C double O N H, N H C O here. And then amide bond occur, and then you can see the cell on this on the top of this protein. Okay, I'm gonna make some question based on this sample sample a lot, so you have to remember this concept. Okay. And then now you can get this yeah, collagen gel, collagen conjugated. Yeah, any kind of protein, is okay. Collagen, fibronectin, RGD, laminin, anything if they have this amine groups, okay? As a last one, yeah, you can do 3D culture, okay? How you can do? This is a cover glass, right? O-ring, inside the O-ring you can have gel, okay? Also, you can have this, directly you can put your gel on the well that can fit your well side. But most of the time, you can do like this. Yeah, from the previous mention, 
limitation. When you make the gel, you can do vortexing or you can just adjust pH. Sometimes when you want to mix some gel and cell together, you can use this kind of two-way syringe. One is A, 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 A hydrogel, B hydrogel when they incorporate the cell and then when they are mixed them together, they can make the gel and then you can pour in here right after making gel. And then also you can make this kind of system. One, two, some of them are include the cell and then push them and then you can pour in the gel. Or if you directly uh, gel and cell, mix them together and then photo activate it. If your gel can be photo activated. So in case of when they are physically gelated, you can use this two system, but when they are photo activated, you can use directly cell and gel, mix them together, and then photo are exposed. And then over time, you can see your cell are growing up. Upon my song. And then we, I, I want to introduce two tips to increase your protein or cell attachment. One is you can use this vacuum based uh, plasma chamber. So many of the plasma, they can increase the surface energy a lot. And any kind of protein, water, or anything can attach well on the bottom. So most of the hydrophilic molecule, they can attach well. And then when you treat the, the, this vacuum plasma, there, this water container should be zero. But over time, maybe one day later, they are recovered. So right after you incubate your scaffold or any kind of membrane on the plasma chamber, as much as possible, you see the cell fast. Okay, and then there is no issue to go away the plasma treatment. This is vacuum type, and then we can also have this kind of pipette type. Yeah, this pipette type also we have it. If you refer this plasma pipette URL, it's not. Like this, you can see there's some plasma white one from one. So if you want to just just simply sterilize or increase the hydrophilicity or cell adhesion ability, you can use this device. We have in our cell room. Yeah, Yujin did a lot. Yujin Kim in dental. She has, she's in charge of that. So this is one thing. So let's say your material is very hydrophobic, and then the first choice is NaOH treatment to increase the hydroxyl group on your material. But sometimes it's not working. And then this plasma, this oxygen plasma or argon plasma, they can induce more hydroxyl radical group on the surface. So any protein, any cell can attach well. Yeah, this is very well known, like this. And the second tip is that if we want to buy some protein or peptide, uh, sometimes coating is necessary. So there are a lot of protocol about gelatin coating, collagen coating, fibronectin, polydilation, matrigel, IgD, laminin, any kind of peptide sequence. So you can find very easily gelatin coating, fibronectin protocol in the website. You can refer that condition. And then if we want to buy some your peptide sequence, we can use this peptro, pep, peptron more manually, they can make it for us. So in case of RGD, four, four or $500 for 20 microgram, it will take three or four weeks. But if you buy another company, maybe 1.5 more. So RGD, just 20 microgram, 20 milligrams, sorry, 20 milligram is around $500,000, $500. $500. But Andrew, this is your NNS. 
peptide, the price is around 1,500 dollars. Very expensive. So that is why some some someday you have to make it someday, not this moment. So you have these two peptides, right? Total amount is three thousand oh, dollars. Only twenty my twenty milligram. So so if you have any peptide, if you want it, you can use this peptron. So if you just provide your sequence of amino acid like this one, that they can give you some voucher or price. So anyhow, uh, you can use two tips to increase your hydrophilicity or surface energy. You can use plasma. And then just in case, you, you can also use some protein, special peptide, uh, manually ordered, or any kind of things. So please try to remember the whole procedure, how you can culture the cell with the biomaterial. Okay, thank you.